Hello, Strategic Management students. It's Fred David here, Professor of Strategic Planning at Francis Marion University and author of the Pearson's Leading Strategic Management Textbook. And for about 20 minutes, let's, let's talk about chapter one, if you don't mind. It's gonna be 11 chapters in this, in this text. And chapter one introduces all the key terms, concepts, tools, techniques, that companies are using to develop an effective strategic plan. You know, having an effective strategic plan is like having a good game plan going into an athletic event. It's vitally crucial, it's, it's, it's the key to success. I'm looking on page two here in the 17th edition of this text and I see that comprehensive strategic planning or strategic management model there. Notice it begins with developing a, a good vision and mission statement, moves right on into the internal and external assessment, formulating strategies. You know, there are three stages I see there in strategic planning, formulating, implementing, and evaluating. And this textbook is gonna follow this model that you see here on page two. So it's gonna be important in this course to be familiar with that model because it reveals, illustrates, how companies develop effective strategic plans. As I move on over here to page four, I see it talks about Vince Lombardi here. So at the beginning of every chapter in this text, it'll, it'll showcase some individual in the past, some corporate CEO or somebody that was a fantastic at developing strategic plans. And Vince Lombardi was one of those folks. You can read about him there. Uh, a person like that will be a, a mentioned at the beginning of each chapter. But basically, this chapter is going to move on into discussing the various components that comprise the strategic planning process. I see this starting on page six there. And strategic management is going to be vital for small businesses, large businesses, profit businesses, and, and nonprofit businesses. There's going to be a significant amount of intuition and subjectivity in strategic planning because we really cannot predict the future. I see this talked about on page eight here, but to be honest with you, the analyses, matrices that businesses are using today has shifted strategic planning in general to be more of a science than an art. And so it's going to, there is a right way to do strategic planning now. That's what we're going to be learning in, in this course. In fact, I'm, I'm going to need each student in, in my classes here at Francis Marion to, to develop over the courses of the semester a comprehensive strategic plan. These things average 40 to 50 pages for, for a company of your choice, probably a Fortune 500 a publicly held firm, but not necessarily. I see on page 10 that the purpose of having a effective strategic plan is to gain competitive advantage over rivals that, to be honest, are trying to trying to put you out of business every day. That's um, every CVS I know of, for example, there's a Walgreens right across the street. And that's you know, a bank that have a, 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 another bank, you have choices. So it's a matter of trying to develop competitive advantages over rival firms and do it ethically and in the most effective manner. And, Chapter one kind of introduces this process and, and then in chapter two, we'll begin with the first, the first step, which is gonna be the vision and developing a, a good vision and mission statement. In fact, on page 11 here in chapter one, the terms vision and mission are introduced here. And that's one thing as I, as I mentioned that, that chapter one does, it introduces key terms in strategic management, just so we're all on the same on the same page here. And you see there on page 11 and page 12, a vision is basically going to be one sentence. Where would the firm like to be five years out? And a mission is more about what, what are we doing right now? You know, we, we need all managers, executives, employees, suppliers, distributors, we need them on a mission to see the organization or the company succeed. And so there, there's a right way to develop a vision and mission state. We're going to learn how to do that in chapter two, but it kind of introduces the concept here on pages 11 and 12. Also, I see on page uh, 12 and 13, we, we talk about internal strengths and weaknesses. You know, the key to formulating an outstanding strategic plan on the athletic field or, or for companies is going to be to 
capitalize on, on your strengths, continually improve on weaknesses. I see this introduced on page 12. And to take advantage of opportunities and try to avoid threats. And we'll see that here on the next page or two with regard to the external assessment. So I'll need each, each uh, student this semester in this class as a part of their comprehensive strategic plan to, to reveal for the, for the class and for, for me who will be looking at what you're doing and, and 10, what you consider to be the 10 major strengths of your firm and the 10 major weaknesses of your, of your project company. Uh, consider their the way they do their management, marketing, finance, MIS, human resources management, production operations, supply chain management, anything they can control. That's the key. Anything that the firm can control, we're going to call that internal. I see them on, on page 13 here, we talk about external opportunities and threats. Actually, page 12, external opportunities and threats. Same kind of thing, but anything the firm cannot control, we need, we need, a, we need a, to know what are the most important actually the 10 most important opportunities and the 10 most important threats. And we'll see going forward in these chapters that both the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that form the, the cornerstone, the, the basis for developing a good strategic plan, those factors are gonna to need to be AQCD. That stands for actionable, quantitative, comparable, comparative, comparable and divisional. So these factors, it takes some research to, to determine, to find, to discover, to uh, the quantitative aspects of these factors, but vagueness is disastrous in strategic planning. And so that's uh, what we'll see going forward for sure. I see on page 14 and 15, SWOT analysis is introduced. SWOT, S-W-O-T, stands for Strength, Weakness, Opportunity, Threat Analysis. This is the most widely used strategic planning matrix across the United States and across indeed the world. It's called SWOT analysis. You see it's a nine cell matrix uh, that, that lists basically the, the key strengths, weaknesses and opportunities, threats, and then formulates some strategies to take advantage of that. So we'll use our strengths to capitalize on opportunities. You, you understand matching internal with external factors. That's a key to success in strategic planning. And that's kind of illustrated on page 15 there with the SWOT analysis. This chapter goes through, I see starting on page 16 with, with the benefits of a firm having an effective strategic plan and following through the, the process that we're gonna be learning this semester in developing an effective game plan. I see, I, I like that little illustration on the bottom of page 16 where it says, what we're gonna reap will be enhanced communication improved understanding, greater commitment, and ultimately managers and employees hopefully will be on a mission to see the organization succeed and I'll know what's in it for them. We're gonna have six chapters in this, in this book on the formulating, how to formulate an effective uh, strategic plan and, to, and two chapters, chapter seven and eight on how to implement. You know, Vincent Party, the uh, legendary coach mentioned at the beginning of this chapter once said, a game uh, an outstanding superior strategic plan never blocked or, or game plan never blocked or tackled anybody. So the implementation phase of, of strategic management, what we'll see in chapter seven and eight, I'm looking forward to getting to, the, to that point because, because it, it's folks are going to need to know what's in it for them. And so you'll see there, for example, we're going to link the compensation of every employee, every manager, every executive in the organization, in the company to how, how we'll link that person's compensation to how well does the business perform overall, whether it's a, some type of annual bonus or stock options or something. So I see on pages 17, 18, the, the benefits, financial and non-benefit, non-financial benefits of a company's engaging in strategic planning process. And like I said a second ago, there, there's a right way to do this. And that's what we're gonna learn this semester. It's really an exciting course. Huh? It's called the capstone course uh, around the world in, in business administration programs, because I'm gonna be looking for you to demonstrate some command already now of marketing, management, finance, MIS, accounting, economics, all of that comes into play in developing a strategic plan. That's why this is called the cap, capstone course everywhere. 
As you probably are aware, I see on page 18, there are, there are some firms that do no strategic planning. They just don't do strategic planning. I, I listen, give some reasons there why, why some companies unfortunately don't do strategic planning. One is no formal training in strategic management. Perhaps they haven't had a course uh, as you're, you're starting to take here. And so they just don't know how to do a uh, strategic plan. That's one reason some companies don't do it. There's actually 10, 10 reasons there commonly why some, why or some organizations would, wouldn't do a strategic plan, but they put themselves at a major competitive disadvantage. To be honest with you, if they don't follow through the process we'll be learning this semester. However, I see on page 18 and 19 as well, in doing strategic planning, there are some pitfalls to, to steer clear of. And I see a number of those listed right there. So even for organizations and companies that, that do strategic planning, there's some, some guidelines that need to be followed and, and we're gonna just see them and discuss them in, in the, chapter as, the chapter as the chapter unfolds. Moving on over to page 22 and 23, I see some skills that you're going to be learning, particularly on page 21 this semester, that I think are worthy of putting on your resume whenever you gain, whenever you're comfortable with these. For example, you could say on your resume or add to your resume uh, after the end of this course or that you gained experience using widely used Excel-based strategic planning software. You see discussed here in chapter one, there's a strategic planning template at the author website, www.strategyclub.com. That darn template right there, widely used by businesses around the world. It's Excel based. It, it, it facilitates the process of developing a strategic plan. You're gonna gain experience using that in this course. And probably it would be a good thing to put on your resume that you become proficient in using that Excel based software. Also, you could put on your resume at the end of this course that you've become proficient in performing SWOT analysis, or you become proficient in developing projected financial statements. Th those kinds of things would trigger a recruiter interviewer somewhere to ask you question, a question about it and give you the opportunity then to talk about this course the software used, the, the skills gained in this course. So, so I love strategic management. I, I hope you're gonna fall in, fall in love with strategic management as this course unfolds. And I hope you find this book to be written in a conversational manner, very concise, persuasive, very up-to-date, very easy to read. I, Roll, I've tried to write this book, uh, my co-authors and I, as a novel. I mean, easy to read. No, no differential equations. Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing difficult at, at all there. In fact, I see on page 23, there are some reasons there why that template I just referred to are are a good thing to to use to help to help formulate your strategic plan and indeed to show the class and myself how how you think the the company could best implement the plan. At the end of every chapter, as I see on page 24 and 25, there are gonna be some issues for review and discussion. We're gonna go through some of these in class, particularly as they relate to your project. Because here at Francis Marion University, uh, especially in our MBA program, the, the comprehensive project, the strategic planning project that you develop for some company of your choice that I'll need to approve there for you, is gonna be the key means I'd like to evaluate your progress in the course. And so many of these questions on page 24 and 25, we'll frame them in terms of how, how the answer relates to the project. So that's kind of what we're gonna be doing in strategic management. That's kind of an overview of chapter one in, in the course. And I hope you once, you, once you read chapter one, I hope you, you won't wanna put the book down. So that's kind of a, a definition of, a, of an excellent book. I'm hoping you to find. I'm hoping you find the book to be a very, very worthy to read and, and and easy to read and and worth your time. And like I say, I'm going. We're going to focus this semester on, on you you gaining new skills, strategic planning skills that not only are vital for developing a strategic plan for any type of firm, large, small, profit, nonprofit, but also could be worthy of of you putting on your resume if you if you wanted to do so. 
Thank you for listening in for a few minutes here on chapter one. I'm going to move on now into chapter two and give you an overview of chapter two for maybe 10, 10, 15 minutes. So looking forward to working with you, getting to know you here soon. Take care. We'll see you, see you here in a few minutes, uh, maybe perhaps on chapter two. Good day.